Hi guys, how are you? Can you hear me well? Awesome, great. Um, so my name is Shannon Foster. Um, I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm a techie. Um, and I got invited to do Cascadia only a few weeks ago, so I'm really excited to kind of be like the last minute speaker, but also kind of show you guys um, some of the things that I hope that you can learn from this talk uh, as far as WebVR goes. Um, from a show of hands, has anyone done work with WebVR before? I see like five people. Okay, that's still cool. Um, has anyone used VR in general before? The headsets, Oculus Rift, Daydream, Cardboard? Okay, that's great, that's great. All right, so it's a good group of people and a good dynamic, I would say. Um, so with this talk, as I mentioned before, I kind of wanted to give you guys a deep dive, um, kind of a little bit of an overview of what is happening and what can be done with WebVR, a little bit beyond the scope of gaming, but more so, per se, uh, you know, shopping or maybe even banking in VR or AR. Um, and so upon creation of this talk, I realized that there was an error in my talk title. Um, so instead of it being down the rabbit hole with VR, it should say something else, um, but I'll dive into that a little bit later as we go through this talk here. Um, yeah, so let's see here. Sorry, give me one moment here. Okay, yeah, so WebVR sparked my interest at Google I.O. 2017. Um, it was this new thing that browsers are trying to adapt and get started with. Um, not too many people still know the difference between regular VR and web VR, and who can blame them? It's you know kind of the, not really the same title, but when you hear web VR, you're just kind of like, okay, what big differences can this be exactly? You know, What exactly can I do with this that I can't do already primarily with the hardware device? Um, and so I'm hoping I can show you that difference here. So let's take a look at a few examples. See if I can get this to play. Okay, cool. So let's see. Uh oh, is it playing? Oh, there we go. So this is, um, if you guys have heard of the AWE Awards, um, this is one of the nominees for the best web VR example sites um, created by this guy called uh, Cubic Photo Cubed. Um, a German developer and a group of designers. Um, this really stood out to me, one, because it's not just a game, but the interactivity along with this um, just was really cool. And if you look here, here <laughs> when you look away, when the user looks away or pulls away from the view and the scene, um, it has some sort of timer or math going on here where it knows, like, okay, user's looking away, head is turned, turn back. Uh, game interacts, or this component interacts. So that's just something that stood out. And this was tagged with 3.js, uh, WebGL, uh, Babylon, and a few other things, and I just thought I'd show you guys. Uh, so another example, this is also another AWE Awards, one that we have going on here. And this one was more so, um, if you've ever been to, they have these new things called AR art, art exhibits. Um, we have this thing, AR tech or something in DC, where it's a nightclub and you can you know, have your little martinis and use your phone to see like the AR pop up on the martini. And so this is a photo gallery and it's in virtual reality and this is me scrolling through it, through the browser of course. And this person created it as a portfolio and I just thought it was a good way to kind of show you guys like how we're stepping through into immersive technology on the browser and you know, just what we can do with it. And the cool thing about this is the user, as you can see, I'm obviously not using a headset. I'm using my laptop to access this. Um, the cool thing about WebVR is all you need is a URL to get access to this game or portfolio or design or anything like that. You don't need necessarily a overpriced or overexpensive Oculus Rift or HTC Vive just to experience this. Anyone can do it, um, which is why I love the inclusivity of WebVR. Um, another one, just a showroom example. If you've ever used like an IKEA app or, a, a, oh gosh, there's another one that's also a furniture store app where you can uh, place, uh, place things in the room and furniture, or even Amazon now, when you shop on there, you can use augmented reality to kind of see 
what things look like in your actual space. And so for instance, this is just another example that just shows like this is a showroom that you can see online, of course, just type in the URL and just kind of tour the area. And something that really stood out to me is you can click on each of these 3D objects that are placed here and the user can decide which types of um, textures that they want to add to the object, which I thought was pretty neat using these different spheres. Um, so if you want to test it out, there is a link right there on the bottom. And just one more. This one I grabbed off of um, Google Experiences. They demoed this last year um, at Google I.O. 2017. Um, and again, it's just like the whole introduction to just using web VR. And this one, this one's actually really funny because it just kind of dives into why there is an error in the way that I named my talk and why there's a need for me to rename it. So I'm going to go ahead and click play. So enter it. Get excited, ready to start and play this game. And then suddenly it tells me, like, hey, by the way, like, we're no longer using WebVR. We're moving over to WebXR. And so that's where the area is, error is in my talk. I misnamed this talk completely. So I decided I'm going to change it to down the rabbit hole with WebVR, or VR on the web, sorry. Uh, and so turns out the WebVR version 1.1 is deprecated. Uh, there's only a few browsers that still use it, and you can probably guess which ones are the late bloomers that probably still use it, maybe, per se. Um, but you can, if necessary, absolutely necessary, you can go back through the API list uh, or documentation and see, you know, okay, I want to use this specific version of this and try it out. Granted, it hasn't gone, obviously, very far. Um, it's still something if you want, worth looking at. But it's been replaced by the WebXR uh, device API, which I'll dive a little bit into a little bit later. Um, and as I mentioned before, currently available on some browsers. Um, WebVR, of course, is an experiment in of, it, in of itself, as we have so many different groups trying to work and develop their own standards of it, um, and just see how far can we go with this technology. Um, so uh, there are multiple iterations that it's going through. We also have um, OpenXR, which is uh, not really competing, but they're also trying to develop this new standard of, again, web VR on the web. Um, and so the open source community and major web browsers are allowing uh, all different types of work for the web VR in a full web standard, as I said before. Um, oops, too far. Uh, there we go. And if this gives me back my mouse, that'd be great. Yeah, OK, so next slide. So anyways, um, so when you try to open up a web one of the web VR applications that are using this API that has been deprecated, um, the user will usually get this error at the very top of their screen, so they can't really do much. I know, disappointment. Um, so it's currently, this is what they'll get with Chrome. Uh, the developer model, as well as a uh, Carnary, and as well as the Samsung Internet, and a few others. I know with uh, Safari, any Apple device, mostly because I'm positive they don't support most of the WebVR features. They're mostly with uh, what is it, AR Core? I think is the way that they're going. Um, so that's why you probably won't see a lot of support, or and or they'll get this error message. Um, and as far as those that still support it, they'll also be able one to use the application, um, and they'll also get this at the very top of it. And the VR display is not found; it's just a function that we can go ahead and, and um, input into our uh, system that displays a little icon that says, "Okay, here you go. You can use the VR functionality." for your device or the supported device. And of course, for Internet Explorer, um, when trying to use uh, WebVR, they're going to get either a blank white screen or a blank black screen. So uh, I don't know why they're always so behind, but it'd be cool if one day they can catch up. <laughs> All right, so that brings to a new talk title, I guess, Down the Rabbit Hole with WebXR. Um, and let's just dive more into exactly what is WebXR. Um, 
So WebXR can be called by many different names from um, extended reality to cross reality. But according to those who are the main contributors to the device API for WebXR, um, they want X to mean something else. Uh, ideally, it's whatever, whatever you guys want it to be. Think of it as a variable of a sort. Uh, whatever you create, this can be the definition of that. So it's open source API, of course, as I mentioned before. Um, it's currently in an experiment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're testing out the limitations on what we can do with WebVR. How far can we actually go with this technology and what can be done? What are the different use cases? Um, I mentioned earlier that a few of us are trying banking and augmented reality where we have your card and you just hover your phone over it, your camera just pops up with a graph, interactive graph of, you know, this is your spending habits, this is how much you spent this month, um, your limits, this is what you went over, this is your goal, things like that just to teach people better spending habits. Um, as well as shopping and augmented reality. We're also trying to disrupt the fashion industry. Um, uh, last year also at Google I.O., they introduced this a new Gap augmented reality application where uh, you can see the textile and the 3D object of the model or whoever wearing this clothing pattern. And you can interact with it, change different sizes of it, and you can do it in the browser as well to make it much more accessible to all users versus those who just have to have a specific uh, type of phone. I can't remember the phone that they tried to pass with the uh, last year just to get that application going. It was a Verizon thing, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, and it also simplifies creating um, VR, and X VR, XR, AR applications on the web uh, for any supported hardware device. Um, so whether it's a Google Daydream, Cardboard, uh, Vive, Rift, um, this simplifies that by allowing developers to have easier access versus using uh, or manually inputting OpenGL, or yeah, OpenGL, WebGL, or whichever um, to get this going. So this just makes life easier for all of us. Um, and of course, it's not OpenXR. Um, so OpenXR is, you can, I guess you can consider it a competitor in a, competitor in a way, um, except none of these companies are, well, groups are, they're open source and they're not making any sorts of money. Um, so OpenXR is a, another API that's created by the Kronos Group, which was previously called the Kronos um, VR Initiative. Um, and that's basically a group of engineers from Google, um, Pluto, I think also Oculus, um, that are pretty much the same people who also <laughs> work on the WebXR platform. Um, and they're all just, again, we're all just trying to work together and develop these new standards for this technology and to see how far we can go. Um, and so this is an example of one of the first applications or mobile applications that's using uh, WebXR, if I can get that to play. And so, um, yeah, they're the, one of the first organizations that are actually getting this going, and they're actually using the WebXR as a platform to help developers, I believe, like you, um, to build augmented reality apps in XR. If it's big enough, I might have to. I'm scared I might break something, but uh, oh, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. And so they're just tracing 3D objects with an interactive menu. And it's all, again, using that WebXR um, device API. Sweet. And let's go do this. OK. OK. <laughs> so one of the things with, uh, the, again, the WebXR API is you can detect query, poll, display. And what this means is that it enables XR applications on the web by allowing pages to do the following. Again, detect, query, poll, display. Um, detective capabilities are available. Query the XR capabilities, poll the XR display, and associated input device state, um, display imagery, and um, on the XR device at the appropriate frame rate. 
Um, and some of the goals, I guess these are primarily the goals of what they're hoping to do with this API. And I know that some of the non-goals, they've made that uh, very clear, is um, define how virtual reality, is to not define how virtual reality, augmented reality works on the browser, and to expose every feature, every feature or a, every piece of VR and AR hardware, um, to not, sorry, and to not build the metaverse. I would hope they're not exposing anything on the hardware. Um, yeah. And so this is just another example of uh, another experiment um, using uh, XR device API. Um, this is primarily for iOS, but I clearly have an Android, so um, it works on here. So let's see if I can play this example. Okay, and so this is just, again, it's just showing what you can do with this API. And I can show you guys a link in a second on how to get access to this. Um, and it's just an experiment of just like trying it out and just see, okay, cool, we're just building, doing this building block game. What else can we do with this? And to show, if you want to scroll through that one, the link is somewhere on here. Um, oh, wait, yep, yeah, this is the one. This is, sorry, I work at a cybersecurity firm, so it's, this is the one that's like, hey, you can, uh, access the site. But anywho, um, if I go back to the slide here. Oops. Okay. Yep. All right. So again, one of the things I mentioned earlier is what's the difference between what VR and VR. Um, one of the main differences, uh, virtual reality is something that we uh, can, well, used to be able to just maintain or keep within hardware devices. So only those who had access to VR or even sometimes AR, um, it's just if they had these very expensive hardware devices. So one of the benefits and beauties of web VR is that we can make it accessible and inclusive for a lot of different people to use it. And it's a good way to think about it. Another way to think about it is that we can scale our applications you know, from being these basic e-commerce sites to something where the user can actually look at the item, this 3D model, spin it around and even walk around it and just see like, okay, is this something that I actually want in my home? Is this something that I actually want to wear? You know, the browser, in my opinion, it's getting a little, websites are getting a little boring nowadays. And I feel like there are just so many different interfaces that we can add, more interactivity that we can have that keeps the user engaged and coming back to our sites for more. Uh, one of the companies I used to work for, um, Under Armour, we didn't enable 360 view of our sneakers, I think until 2016, I believe. Um, and even then, it's still not enough for, the, for our customers. They call us and they ask us, hey, like, what, what, what's the exact color of this? Because sometimes the you know, colors are off, or what's the exact material of this, or you know, what does this feel and look like? And in some cases, unfortunately for us, we can't really explain it, though you know, we work there, we still don't technically buy a lot of, even if you work at Under Armour, you don't really buy the shoes, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> so it was just really hard to, you know, it's just really hard to explain you know, what this material would look like for the customer. And so imagine this, if we have this VR application or even an AR, again, they can look at it, technically not feel it or smell it, that'd be kind of weird, um, but still they can just see like, okay, this is what this product look like, looks like. Okay, yes, this product can definitely be for me just a way to consider it. And there are companies that are doing that. I can link you a few later on. Um, and so just to dive into, um, again, with WebVR, we have, uh, usually if you're on YouTube, on your mobile device, you'll see this little icon in the corner that says, okay, do you wanna watch this video in virtual reality? And then you'll get these two little lens that, well not lens, well screens that pop up that are split, but they're showing the same exact content for when you put the VR headset on. And then of course with VR, it's the same thing except, I mean, you can use the same, these same exact devices for viewing web VR. And so the idea of the future of web VR is that we can browse the web or browse the anything, really, using these same exact devices. But the best way, in my opinion, to do this is to just either have the option to, yes, you can use the hardware device, or no, you can just use your phone or the browser to get this done. 
And just to dive a little bit into WebGL, because I figured, okay, hey, yeah, sure, let's go ahead and touch base on this just a little bit. Um, so WebGL is basically what I describe as just simply, oh, dear God, that's cutting up. <laughs> it's just a canvas. <laughs> a canvas uh, for just building 2D and 3D graphics. Um, the great thing about today's available libraries of uh, just frameworks is that you don't necessarily have to do this. You don't have to manually go in and type all of this obnoxiousness in, <laughs> in your HTML because there's something that's already there that does this for you. I'm just gonna, I mean, if you guys wanna see it, I can show you this later, but there's really no point in seeing it. Let's see if it'll go down. Oh, no, over. Yeah. Oh, wait, too far. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, so I guess that cut down to the last one, weird. But anyways, um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. Um, my name is Shannon Foster. I'm a junior software engineer and also a full-time student. Um, WebVR is something I've been doing for the last year and a half, or technically after the launch of, uh, I would say Pokemon Go is when I got into <laughs> augmented reality. So I was like, yeah, I gotta try this out. But anyways, feel free to reach out and thank you so much.